Hey babe, and anybody else watching, and welcome back to A Life Together. Today, Leviticus 19, 20, and 21. Yesterday, we looked at the Day of Atonement, the idea of eating blood being forbidden. Again, this is all setting God's people apart uh, from the surrounding nations. And then uh, also we looked at unlawful sexual relations. So today, uh, we're going to be looking at moral laws, we're going to look at punishments, we're going to look at rules for priests, and again, it's all under that purview of God's people looking different, appearing different to the surrounding peoples, and being set apart as holy. And we'll talk about that uh, very briefly. So again, Leviticus 19, 20, and 21. <clears throat> Chapter 19. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, be holy, because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Each of you must respect his mother and father, and you must observe my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols or make gods of cast metal for yourselves. I am the Lord your God. When you sacrifice a fellowship offering to the Lord, sacrifice it in such a way that it will be accepted on your behalf. It shall be eaten on the day you sacrifice it or on the next day. Anything left over until the third day must be burned up. If any of it is eaten on the third day, it is impure and will not be accepted. Whoever eats it will be held responsible because he has desecrated what is holy to the Lord that person must be cut off from his people. When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Do not go over your vineyard a second time or pick up the grapes that have fallen. Leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord your God. Do not steal, do not lie, do not deceive one another. Do not swear falsely by my name and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Do not defraud your neighbor or rob him. Do not hold back the wages of a hired man overnight. Do not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block in front of the blind. But fear your God. I am the Lord. Do not pervert justice. Do not show partiality to the poor or favoritism to the great. But judge your neighbor fairly. Do not go about spreading slander among your people. Do not do anything that endangers your neighbor's life. I am the Lord. Do not hate your brother in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor frankly, so he will not share, or so you will not share in his guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Keep my decrees. Do not mate different kinds of animals. Do not plant your field with two kinds of seed. Do not wear clothing woven of two kinds of material. If a man sleeps with a woman who is a slave girl promised to another man, but who has not been ransomed or given her freedom, there must be due punishment. Yet they are not to be put to death, because she has not been freed. The man, however, must bring a ram to the entrance to the tent of meeting for a guilt offering to the Lord. With the ram of the guilt offering, the priest is to make atonement for him before the Lord, for he or for the sin he has committed, and his sin will be forgiven. When you enter the land and plant any kind of fruit tree, regard its fruit as forbidden. For three years you are to consider it forbidden. It must not be eaten. In the fourth year, all its fruit will be holy, an offering of praise to the Lord. But in the fifth year, you may eat its fruit. In this way, your harvest will be increased. I am the Lord your God. Do not eat any meat with the blood still in it. Do not practice divination or sorcery. Do not cut the hair at the sides of your head or clip the edges of your beard. Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. I am the Lord. Do not degrade your daughter by making her a prostitute, or the land will turn to prostitution and be filled with wickedness. Observe my Sabbaths and have reverence for my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Raise in the presence, or rise in the presence of the aged, show respect for the elderly, and revere your God. I am the Lord. When an alien lives with you in your land, do not mistreat him. The alien living with you must be treated as one of your native-born. Love him as yourself, for you were aliens in Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Do not use dishonest standards when measuring length, weight, or quantity. Use honest scales and honest weights, an honest ephah, and an honest hin. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt. Keep all my decrees and my laws and follow them. I am the Lord. Chapter 20. <clears throat> the Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, Any Israelite or any alien living among Israel who gives any of his children to Molech must be put to death. 
The people of the community are to stone him. I will set my face against that man, and I will cut him off from his people. For by giving his children to Moloch, he has defiled my sanctuary and profaned my holy name. If the people of the community close their eyes when that man gives one of his children to Molech and they fail to put him to death, I will set my face against that man and his family and will cut off from their people both him and all who follow him in prostituting themselves to Molech. I will set my face against the person who turns to the medium and, mediums and spiritists to prostitute himself by following them, and I will cut him off from his people. Consecrate yourselves and be holy, because I am the Lord your God. Keep my decrees and follow them. I am the Lord who makes you holy. If anyone curses his father or mother, he must be put to death. He has cursed his father or his mother, and his blood will be on his own head. If a man commits adultery with another man's wife, with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress must be put to death. If a man sleeps with his father's wife, he has dishonored his father. Both the man and the woman must be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man sleeps with his daughter-in-law, both of them must be put to death. What they have done is a perversion. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man lies with a man, as one lies with a woman, both of them have done what is detestable. They must be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man marries both a woman and her mother, it is wicked. Both he and they must be buried or burned in fire so that no wickedness will be among you. If a man has sexual relations with an animal, he must be put to death, and you must kill the animal. If a woman approaches an animal to have sexual relations with it, kill both the woman and the animal. They must be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man marries his sister, the daughter of either his father or his mother, and they have sexual relations, it is a disgrace. They must be cut off before the eyes of their people. He has dishonored his sister and will be held responsible. If a man lies with a woman during the monthly period, during her monthly period, and has sexual relations with her, he has exposed the source of her flow, and she has also uncovered it. Both of them must be cut off from their people. Do not have sexual relations with the sister of either your mother or your father, for that would be a dishonor, a close for that would dishonor a close relative. Both of you would be held responsible. If a man sleeps with his aunt, he has dishonored his uncle. They will be responsible. They will die childless. If a man marries both his brother's wife, it is an, or marries his brother's wife, it is an act of impurity. He has dishonored his brother. They will be childless. Keep all my decrees and laws and follow them, so that the land where I am bringing you to live may not vomit you out. You must not live according to the customs of the nations I am going to drive out before you, because they did all these things. I abhorred them. But I said to you, you will possess their land. I will give it to you as an inheritance, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, who has set you apart from the nations. You must, therefore, make a distinction between clean and unclean animals, and between clean and unclean birds. Do not defile yourselves by any animal or bird or anything that moves along the ground, those which I set apart as unclean for you. You are to be holy to me, because I, the Lord, am holy, and I have set you apart from the nations to be my own. A man or a woman who is a medium or spiritist among you must be put to death. You are to stone them. Their blood will be on their own heads. Chapter 21. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say to them, A priest must not make himself ceremonially unclean for any of his people who die, except for a close relative, such as a mother or father, his son or daughter, his brother, or an unmar unmarried sister who is dependent on him, since she has no husband. For her, he may make himself unclean. He must not make himself unclean for people related to him by marriage, and so defile himself. Priests must not shave their heads or shave off the edges of their beards or cut their bodies. They must be holy to their God and must not profane the name of their God, because they present the offerings made to the Lord by fire, the food of their God. They are to be holy. They must not marry women defiled by prostitution or divorced from their husbands, because priests are to be holy to their God. Regard them as holy, because they offer up the food of your God. Consider them holy, because I, the Lord, am holy, I who make you holy. If a priest's daughter defiles herself by becoming a prostitute, she disgraces her father. She must be burned in the fire. The high priest, the one among his brothers, who has had the anointing oil poured on his head, and who has been ordained to wear the priestly garments, must not let his hair become unkempt or tear his clothes. He must not enter a place where there is a dead body. 
He must not make himself unclean, even for his father or mother, nor leave the sanctuary of his God, or desecrate it, because he has been dedicated by the anointing oil of his God. I am the Lord. The woman he marries must be a virgin. He must not marry a widow, a divorced woman, or a woman defiled by prostitution, but only a virgin from his own people. So he will not defile his offspring among his people. I am the Lord who makes him holy. The Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, For generations to come, none of your descendants who has a defect may come near to offer the food of his God. No man who has any defect may come near. No man who is blind or lame, disfigured or deformed. No man with a crippled foot or hand or who has a hunchbacked or dwarfed or who has any eye defect or who has a festering or running sores or damaged testicles. No descendant of Aaron the priest who has any defect is to come near the priest uh, to come near to present the offerings made to the Lord by fire. He has a defect. He must not come near to offer the food of his God. He may eat the most holy food of his God as well as the holy food. Yet because of his defect, he must not go near the curtain or approach the altar and so desecrate my sanctuary. I am the Lord who makes them holy. So Moses told this to Aaron and his sons and to all the Israelites. Man, there's a lot here. Uh, I think it's really interesting right there at the end, 21, um, uh, ba, 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 ba. I guess it is, yeah, 21, 23. Yet because of his defect, he must not go near the curtain or approach the altar and so desecrate my sanctuary. I am the Lord who makes them holy. It's not saying that these people don't have value. I mean, God recognizes their value, absolutely. Um, they're still able to eat this food, but these people are to be without blemish before the Lord. There were to be without defect. And I mean, that's what all this law is talking about, is this is how we are to appear before God without defect, um, looking different, uh, not perverting justice, 1915, um, not showing partiality to the poor or favoritism to the rich. So that kind of flips things on its head, right? Saying that as our society would say, oh yeah, we need to we need to honor the poor and lift them up. And that's true. I mean, that is supported throughout the Bible. Jesus has a heart for those that are hard up, that are um, in need and are hurting. Absolutely. But we don't show partiality to them as well as no partiality to the rich. Again, if they're equal in God's sight, then that's kind of a different standard. Our standard needs to look different to the world. Now, again, we support and we help those people absolutely good grief but what what is being advocated here is god's justice which is infinitely higher than ours so i thought that was really cool um let's see the um oh leviticus yeah covering all uh that must be done to be obedient to god uh what i said here is um this is a prerequisite what we have here in leviticus seems to be a prerequisite that jesus talks to so but jesus elevates that uh, much further than than what was originally thought. So uh, don't murder. Jesus says, yeah, okay, that's good. You've heard it said, don't murder. Uh, but then he kicks it up a notch saying, yeah, you're not, you're not even to hate people in your heart. So um, yeah, you've heard uh, don't commit adultery. Well, I'll tell you what, even looking at a woman lustfully is committing adultery in your heart. So Jesus kicks that up even further. And Jesus is the only one who has ever been and will ever able to be able to maintain that standard. And that's a good thing. Uh, we recognize that he is the perfect intermediary. Definitely worth praying about. God, we thank you so much for your word. And we thank you that we have the perfect intermediary in Christ, that we can come to you uh, without meeting all these requirements, Lord, all the requirements of the law, which show that your people are holy, Lord, we have, we have failed them from the outset. And yet you have put Jesus in, uh, in time and in this world that we can worship and have faith. And because of that, Lord, that you look at his righteousness when you see us. God, we thank you so, so much for that. Let us live in a way to honor you, that while we are not perfect, Lord, um, we can look to the one who is, and you will see the one who is. Help us to always remember that and to give glory and praise and honor, Lord. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. And that is pretty much all I have for you today. For anyone watching, know that I appreciate you, and wife, appreciate you tons. And I will plan on seeing you tomorrow. Have a good one.